Radio TV Phono Nut here, and what we have today is a Zenith Spirit of 76 9 inch portable solid state black and white television. And I thought, with all the political stuff and the election coming up, this would be a fitting time to do a video on this set. I bought this several years ago at a yard sale, didn't pay much money for it. Uh, it could stand a good cleaning, and the uh, the uh, sun shield is missing from the uh, screen here. Also, the channel knob is broken, but that particular channel knob, I believe, was used on a lot of different Zenith sets, so finding one, one shouldn't be a big deal. I uh, haven't plugged this in in years, but as I recall, the CRT was very dim, and I think it had an audio problem, so... Let's turn it on and see what happens. Well, we have audio. Of course, I don't know if we'll have audio when we connect a signal or not, but... And yeah, that looks a lot brighter on camera than it does in real life, but... The picture tube is very, very dim. So let me go dig up a DTV converter box and we'll put a signal to it and see what we get. Oh yeah, and the antenna's all bent and broke. No real surprise there, but I'll probably just break it off the rest of the way because we really don't need that anyway in today's world. Manufactured November 1975 for the uh, Bicentennial. A lot of companies made things, particularly electronics, to commemorate the bicentennial. I know GE had a little red, white, and blue 12-inch set that was a tube transistor hybrid chassis. I'm thinking RCA might have had something too, but I know GE had a, such a TV and a, I believe a record player and a, some radios too. Alright, box is connected. Let's see what happens. And I bet this box is still on channel 11, and channel 11 changed their frequency, and I haven't even reprogrammed this box yet. Okay, there we are. No program. Oh yeah, that tube is very soft. Bed. Why not look at a two-sided bed that can be turned over? Before you make an investment in bedding, come see it. Yeah, we have sound, so apparently all we have is a severely soft picture tube. Helping you. They're in the business helping themselves. You need somebody to help you to get the most money you can The only way I can, if I turn the brightness up, the picture blooms and blows out. And if I turn it down to where it doesn't smear, it's so dim you can't hardly see it. Turn the contrast about mid-range. All right, let's pull the back off of this and get the CRT tester on it. We'll either rejuvenate it and it'll look good, or we'll blow it up, one of the two. Here's the chassis. Surprisingly, it's pretty clean on the inside. Uh, probably made in Taiwan. I think Zenith shifted production of small screen black and whites to Taiwan in around 70 or 71. All right, we have a Zenith branded 9VALP4 tube made in Taiwan. EIA code 1240, and I, I'll have to check, but I think that's Clinton. I know they made a lot of tubes for these little small black and white sets. So, all right, let's find a CRT tester and check this thing out. All right, we're connected to the Syncor CR70, and if you remember the last time I used this in a video, it acting like it wanted to uh, misbehave. So we'll see how it does today, and if it misbehaves, we'll have to dig up another tube checker. I uh, testing it for shorts. That's good. Didn't figure there'd be any shorts. 
Alright, cut off. Nothing. Didn't figure there would be an emission. <laughs> Nothing. Well, if I bring it up to 12.6 filament voltage, we get that much emission, and that's not much. So we have it set to auto restore, and we'll hold this button down for three cycles on the meter. I'm going to try to get a picture of the CRT neck and see if we can get an arc when it does this. One. Two. And three. Alright, let's turn it back to emission and see what happens. Ah, uh, that didn't do too good. It brought it up that much. Yeah, I'd, I'd say this tube has either pretty much had it or this checker is either misbehaving, but we will unplug it and turn it on and see what it looks like. Alright, let's see. Well, it would help if I turn the isolation transformer on. Well, it came up some. for brunch when we were yeah and he goes do you remember the time that we were at that hotel and they had fabric on the walls and we all had a food fight I'm like yeah he goes well if my kid well actually he's doing very well for a man who had a food in the morning yesterday why shouldn't I do well if such friends as you have turned out to be and your valiant son well, that don't look half bad, but I'm going to dig up another CRT tester and retest this tube and see how it really tests. Because like I said, the Syncor appeared to be misbehaving the last time we used it. And we knew the tube was weak. And obviously the rejuvenate function did something, but the Syncor may not be giving us an accurate representation of the uh, current emission now, so... We'll dig up another tester and see what we can come up with. Now on a blank raster, you see we have these uh, vertical lines, bars, on one side of the screen. Actually, they are more prominent on this side, but they go all the way all the way across the screen. That could be a capacitor bad. I've, I've seen the capacitor that's in the B-plus line to the video output stage, the boost filter capacitor open up and cause something similar, but we'll check that. But you really can't notice them when it's tuned to a TV program. Democratic National Convention. Dr. Jill Biden and former President Bill Clinton take center stage as Joe Biden officially becomes his party's presidential nominee. NBC News convention coverage continues tonight at 10 p.m. Okay, here's another CRT tester, an RCA model... WT-333B, and as best I can tell, this is from 1974. I have never used this. In fact, all I've done to it was sprayed contact cleaner in the switches and powered it up to see if the uh, filament meter would move, and it works. So we're going to test it on this CRT here shortly. It looks like it's been well taken care of, except for the... Uh, latch, plastic latch, broken on the case, which means it was used uh, more than twice. I don't know why in the devil they would put a plastic latch and a plastic hinge on a piece of uh, shop grade test equipment like this. B&K did the same thing with their testers from the 70s and 80s, and when you find them, they're almost always broken. Well, yeah, I know why they did it, to save a few cents. And here we are, for its time, this was a nice tester, it has three meters, but 
it only has the sockets for the uh, older style picture tubes and this setup chart is only good for tubes made up to when the time that this tester was made. I've looked on the internet and I really can't find any updated information about this tester. So if anybody else knows anything about it or knows where I can get any updated information, I'd like to hear from Alright, the tube we want to check is a 9VALP4, but as you can see, that's not listed on this chart. It goes from VAK to VAM. Now on the Syncor chart, the VAJ, VAK, and VAL all have the same settings, although on this chart the VAJ indicates to set the uh, G1 switch to the high position. We'll just set it for normal for what we're testing and see how it does. Now, as bright and sharp as that tube looked after I rejuvenated it with the Syncor, I would expect way better emission than what I was reading with the Syncor. It was just barely moving the needle. That's why I think there's something wrong with the Syncor. In reality, that little amount of emission with no cutoff wouldn't have given us much more than what we had to start with, if any more, so I want to check it on this tester and that will kind of give me an idea about the condition of this tester and, uh, and such and see what the tube emission really is. Now a word about rejuvenation. Uh, how well it works is dependent on several variables, the type of tube, the condition of the tube, etc. For example, the old large neck 70 degree and 90 degree color roundy tubes and rectangular tubes have much sturdier cathodes and will usually take a rejuvenation with a good tester and will often last a long time. Whereas the little small neck black and white tubes like what we just rejuvenated have a very tiny fragile cathode that usually doesn't hold up well and oftentimes rejuvenation doesn't hold up long at all. And even if you have a large neck color tube, an old Delta gun color tube that's extremely worn out and the emitting material from the cathode is basically gone, all the rejuvenation in the world is not going to help. In other words, rejuvenation can last a few minutes, a few hours, a few days, a few weeks, a few months, or a year or two, but in any case, rejuvenation should, should never be considered a permanent fix. It's just something to get you by until you can either source a good CRT or come up with another television set. And that was really the goal of it even back in the day. The only difference was back in the day it was a lot easier to get a new CRT. Back then I could get a 9VALP4 for probably very little money and wouldn't be any problem. Today it's not so easy because nobody to my knowledge is making CRTs and nobody is rebuilding old ones anymore. So oftentimes rejuvenation is the only shot you have at uh, saving an old television set. And then you have to look high and low in hopes you can find a new old stock CRT somewhere or one that tests good from a junk television. Alright, let's get back in the shop with this tester and uh, check our CRT and see what it reads. Now even if it reads bad on this tester, I'm not going to hit it again. It looks very acceptable like it is. And even if the emission shows bad on this tester, I'm not going to risk blowing it out by rejuvenating it again. When you get one that looks decent, that's where you want to stop. You don't want to keep pushing your luck because you can make it look worse than it than it did to start with. Alright, pressing the heater adjust button, we're set to 11 volts. Now we want to press the cutoff button and then we'll rotate the cutoff knob for two divisions past zero. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we have good cutoff. Alright, now leaving the cutoff button pressed, we'll now press the quality button and see what our emission is.
and our, our emission is well into the green so that's what we that's what we want that's what I expected to see so yeah that just proves that the uh, that just proves that the Syncor tester has an issue alright this tester doesn't have a quote unquote life test function but we can simulate that by turning the heater voltage down and I've got it just below 10 volts We'll let the tube settle down for a second, and then we'll retest it for cutoff and emission and see if it's still up in the green. If it's down in the red, then uh, it's probably not going to last too long. But even at that, still take that with a grain of salt, because like I said, rejuvenation is not permanent. It's a, it's a Band-Aid. And we can see our cutoff has dropped down, so we'll reset that. Yeah, it's still reading in the good, so this thing might actually last a little while. And I just sprayed some cleaner in the pots and in the tuner, and I'm now working the tuner back and forth to get the cleaner worked in. It really wasn't that bad, but I usually just clean the controls in these as a standard procedure when working on one of these sets, or anything from this era with mechanical controls. Okay, I went through and ESR tested a bunch of capacitors and none of them failed. And that's about as far as I'm going to take this. You, you can't even see those bars when you're tuned to a station, so I'm really not worried about it, especially knowing the picture tubes and the shape it's in. And I just noticed this weird connector on the bottom of the set. I really don't know what that's for. This on the back is our power connector. It uses one set of contacts for... AC and another set of contacts for the DC cord so I don't know what this is on the bottom unless this was designed to interface with some sort of computer early uh, personal computer or a uh, security camera I know Zenith did make a TV that was for such use but I don't know if they would have had one this far back or not alright I'm going to put this back together and let it go well, you know how it often works. You get a set going and put the back back on it, and then it decides to uh, create more problems, and that appears to be the case here. We're now tuned to a channel, and the bars are more pronounced, as well as the left side of the screen is darker than the right, and it's all smeary, and it just looks ugly. So we're going to have to go back in this thing, and... Uh, see what's up with it. When one does that, that's generally, that generally indicates that the uh, B plus uh, boost filter capacitor is open, but I call myself checking all that. Maybe I overlooked it, or maybe the CRT is shorted. That can sometimes cause this too. Yes, and Queen Mattress is one for dead. But you won't admit it. And so he goes right on telling you what to do. Yeah, you can see all the smeariness and... Yeah, let's open this back up and see what's going on with it. Okay. HK short, that's good. G1 short, that's good. Cut off. Yeah, these little marks are very hard to see on here. We're going to say that's good, all right, quality. Yeah, the tube is still fine, so whatever's wrong is a circuit fault. This is when I wished I had not given away all of my Sam's photo facts. Years ago, when I thought I was done with uh, TV repair, I gave away about ten cabinets of Sam's photo facts, so, you know... But I kept a few out, so I'm going to try to find something that's similar to this and see if I can figure out what's going on here. I'm still not finding the capacitor that I seek. Okay, the brightness control, one end connects to ground. The center pin is your output that goes up to the cathode of the CRT in the, in the uh, video output stage, and the other end 
connects to your boost supply, which I would think would be around 200 volts. Well, I'm only getting 50 volts there. And a leaky, bad capacitor could uh, cause that voltage to be low. But, uh, now i got to find it. You know, if I had a schematic for this exact television, I could probably find the trouble in about two minutes. But without a schematic, and as cramped as this chassis sort of is, it kind of kind of presents a problem. All right, I traced the uh, boost voltage input to the brightness control back through this red wire to this plug on the main chassis, so hopefully I can trace this back and see where it originates from. Okay, for the life of me, I still can't find where that boost filter capacitor is, so I just jumped one. I just jumped one from where the boost voltage enters the uh, brightness control to ground, and as you can see, our picture is nice and snowy and no interference. And I've got 126 volts there. All right, there we are. We have a nice picture now. No smearing. There's a some faint bars on the left-hand side of the screen, but no smearing like it was. Now let me remove that capacitor and see if the uh, problem comes back. Alright, the capacitor is removed and it's all smeary and smudgy and yeah. So we just got to find that boost capacitor. At all costs, we have got to find that. So far, all I'm seeing is this trace. It goes... Where does it go? Right to this point right here, which is a... which is a... There's nothing there. So am I missing something or what? There's got to be a trace coming off of here somewhere. Alright, I've located it. And had it been a snake, it would have bit me. It's a 4.7 microfarad, 250 volt, and it's reading 0.29 microfarads, and it's one that I could have swore I ESR tested, and it was good before. Well, it probably was kind of good before because the set was kind of working okay, except for those little bars that you could see when the set was tuned to a blank raster, but as you can see, it's no good now. And on the ESR meter, it's completely open. No surprise there. Alright, the original was a 4.7 at 250 volt. All I've got is 200 volt and 450 volt. So we're going to have to go with a 450 volt here. Alright, cap is replaced and everything looks fine. Got 127 volt boost, which is probably about what it should be. All right, I'm going to put the back back on it, and hopefully we won't have to pull it off again. All right, here we are back together, and no bars on the left-hand side of the screen now. No shading, no smearing. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Now let me see if I can find a remote for this box and reprogram it so I can get the other channel. Yeah, Happy Days going off, a show that was probably watched on this set whenever it was newer. This is DTV, your home for memorable entertainment television. You're watching Me TV Meridian. Remember, for local news, turn to CBS 24 at 6 and 10 for Twin States News. Alright, I found the remote. Let's see if it'll still work. Alright, channel. Auto scan. Hit it. Well, come on and go. I guess it would if I'd hit the... hit all the sequence of buttons. You know, you gotta love this digital garbage. Just drop out and pixelate. Mm. Such doesn't mean you gotta be friends. You do? Yes, we're aware of it. 
Hey! It's most basic. You'll be here. Hmm. ...through this unique set of circumstances. We're doing now, but... Oh, and you! Are you at your draft, Doctor? You're at your wellness, sir. Right into the line of questions. So now you know what stations we can receive around here. Nineteen years old and going to a volunteer fire first could be best. But it's a good way to part of their problem here is uh the FCC recently required them to change from RF channel eleven to RF channel thirteen. That's why everybody had to rescan their boxes and TVs. And they were gonna they were changing out the transmitter and replacing the the old antenna that'd been there since nineteen fifty two with a new state of the art digital antenna. That's their term, not mine. Well with all the COVID nineteen crap, they couldn't get a tower crew here as uh, quick as they wanted to, so they had to reduce power and run on a temporary antenna and that's why they're hard to get. And most of the folks out in the county can't even get them at all, not even with an outdoor antenna. In the old days of analog, you would have gotten something. It might have been a snowy picture, but you would at least it would have at least gotten something that you could could watch. And we'll even ship it to you free. But wait, call right now and you can get a matching single serve egg pan absolutely free. You get it all. Call now. Oh, yes, I'm going to call right now and get it all for the unbelievably low price of $29.99. Any other website? Sir, we have an incoming call. Send it to voicemail. Done. Apartments.com, the most popular place to find a place. These fudge brownie M&Ms are really fudgy. Yes, they are. To put a fudge brownie center in an M&M's is... Genius. I know. I was going to say hard. Why won't you? Just practicing Diablo. He channeled all his hair. A retired police officer demanding she follow the law. But I just need the stuff for my baby. She said it was 20 and I have only 11. He's handing over his own money to help her out. Jalen Hines. They're the ones inside. Then... Ten days in, I was... I haven't had a nightmare since we got you that nightlight. No wonder it's... Eric Gould Shaw would die alongside more than 50 of his men at Fort Wagner. He volunteered... ...part of his relentless attacks on our democratic institutions and countless dedicated public servants. Like me... These officials didn't swear an oath to a person or a... We're committed to helping ensure Trulicity is available and affordable. Learn more at Trulicity.com. Guy is obsessed with Oscar. Their first word was doggy. <laughs> as soon as she saw him. Okay. Just like that. Of course we can help. Today can be your next payday. Oh, there are yes. No they can help you get into debt. Those bigger money emergencies. It's, money now offers it's cool to be in debt in debt today. To Don't you know that? With six monthly payments. The fastest cash in town. The we more debt, the better. You need money now. Donating life-saving plasma has... Burton for keeping it tonight for us. Okay, pal. Stow that out. And your steak in a growing... And, of course, we have to get some of this guy. The difference is stark. You know what Donald Trump will do with four more years? Blame, bully, and belittle. And you know what Joe Biden will do? Build back better. It's Trump's us versus them America against Joe Biden's America, where we all live and work together. It's a clear choice. The future of our country is riding on it. Thank you. And we are hearing from three former presidents, the, the daughter and grandson of President Kennedy, of course, Jimmy Carter and his wife, Rosalind, and just now, 
Bill Clinton uh, with a tough message uh, about the buck never stopping here, talking about President Trump. But right now, Amna Nawaz is here to check in with a reporter on the ground in a state that Joe Biden must win. Amna. That's right, Judy, even as that every day. And the more I think about it, even though I didn't trace the wiring out, that plug on the bottom that I wasn't sure what it was is most likely designed to plug into a rechargeable battery pack. I know a lot of these TVs like this had a, a, a battery that would attach to the bottom of the uh, television, and then you could run it off, recharge it with the AC, and then run it off a battery until, of course, it ran down. Or you could use the DC power cord that generally had a cigarette lighter plug on the end of it, so you could operate the set in your car. So, yeah, maybe that's what that plug's for. It's night two of the digital DNC and all eyes ah, the are digital on DNC. Ah, uh, yes. Also tonight, former President Bill Clinton. Then, Joe Biden's closest advisor, the woman who wants to be the next first lady, Dr. Jill Biden. Live from New York City and across the country, the Democratic National Convention. Now reporting, Chief Anchor, George Stephanopoulos. Good evening and welcome to day two of the Democratic National Convention, a night designed by the Democrats to bridge the past and future of the party. Coming off Michelle Obama's fierce call to action last night, Dr. Jill Biden will introduce herself to much of the country tonight. We've seen the 17 rising stars who kicked off tonight with the keynote, plus two former presidents, Jimmy Carter and Bill Clinton, and one of America's most prominent Republicans, General Colin Powell. It is also a night for some traditional convention business, and like everything else this year, it's being done in a brand new way. The roll call of the states from the states, starting with Alabama, the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma. Delaware will secure the nomination for favorite son Joe Biden at the close. Let's check in now with the state of Nebraska. A lot of us don't have paid sick leave or even quality protective equipment. We are human beings, not robots, not disposable. We want to keep helping you feed your family, we need a president who will have our back. Nebraska cast 33 votes for our next president, Joe Biden. Nevada. Working people are the backbone of our economy and the key to our recovery. Joe Biden knows it's not enough to praise them. We have to reward them. So let's raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour. Empower workers to negotiate for better benefits and safer workplaces. And make it easier to pay for things like health care and higher education. I am proud to cast 24 votes for Bernie Sanders and 20. And do they not have sense enough to realize that raising the minimum wage to 15 dollars an hour is just going to raise the cost of everything and you're going to be uh, right back where you were and besides uh, I'm sorry but some of these folks I've run into out there are not worth $15 an hour reunite all Americans and build a better future for all the great state of New Hampshire awards nine delegates to our friend and neighbor Bernie Sanders and 24 delegates to the next president of the United States Joe Biden. He did not win New Hampshire, but he got the delegates tonight there in the state of New Hampshire. The roll call continues right there. Much business to come tonight. We're going to come back as Delaware puts Joe Biden over the top. But let's talk a little bit more about tonight. World News Tonight anchor David Muir is here. What are you looking for most? Well, I'm looking for most who's going to break through tonight. You know, Michelle Obama last night, 24 hours ago, you know, it was the big test. This grand experiment, this all virtual convention, George, would they be able to pull it off? A lot of talk about the pregnant pauses with the live shots. Some of that's charming and reflects the moment we're all in with our Zoom calls with our family and friends. And, now they and say in the early days of television that neighbors used to gather around and watch. Message could land. Well, it's Michelle still the same way today. The insects that live around me are gathering around to watch the Democratic National Convention. And she's teeing up who will be the headliner this hour, George. All eyes will be on Dr. Jill Biden. She's expected to make the case. She'll be live talking about her husband and the empathy that Michelle Obama was talking about last night, that her husband, she believes, possesses the empathy needed in this moment to help bring this country back together. And we all remember that she was the first second lady to keep her job. She was teaching at a community college in Northern Virginia. Uh, Michelle Obama, the first.
first to sort of endorse Jill Biden tonight before she even heard her. She's put out on Instagram, I can't wait to hear Jill Biden's speech tonight. She's one of the most grounded people you'll ever meet. I have no doubt in my mind that Jill will make a wonderful first lady. We know that they were sort of partners in crime, as Michelle Obama has often said, dear friends, and she'll be cheering her on tonight. In many ways, she teed up Jill Biden's speech tonight. We'll be speaking from high school where she taught in the 1990s. Lindsay Davis here as well. We saw some faces of the future in the 9 o'clock hour, the 17 keynoters. And among those, well, not one of the 17, but one of the faces of the future, AOC. She's now trending on Twitter, as you'd likely imagine. Jill Biden, again, somebody that right. many people want to hear. I heard enough. She is his lifelong running mate, married for more than 40 years, took five times.